quorum. Okay, members, the first uh, item on our agenda today that we'll take up will be Senate Bill 204 by Senator Adley. Uh, we'll just remind you that uh, this is a duly referred bill to our committee. It has been heard uh, in House Education previously. Uh, we will not be debating the education issues, and, and I would ask uh, the author and committee members uh, to hold to the financial piece only uh, in this committee. So, Senator Adley, uh, at this time, you may begin. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate you reminding the committee of the dual referral. I will share with you this is our fourth committee uh, with this piece of legislation. We have been through the Senate Revenue Committee. That addresses the bond side and Senate finance, as well as House education and now House appropriations. Uh, the issue before you is, is how do we find the ways to grow uh, the community college and technical college system to create the skilled labor force and afford to pay for it? Uh, our proposal has been, as I set forth early on, the law in Louisiana allows us to go outside of the general capital outlay bill that that we all know, and we have done it twice before in this state when there is a time of need, and I can see no greater need now than the, the, the technical college in this state has doubled in enrollment. By Board of Regents' own reports, their capacity is, they're out of capacity. They have no room. And so we put together this proposal for you uh, to begin this process of putting back the capacity that we need for the skilled labor force and the training of the young people in this state. The only one statement I would make with your permission, Mr. Chairman, is to let this committee know, out of every hundred kids that enter the ninth grade in this state, 20 are going to get a college degree. Five are going to get some college. And that leaves 75 that requires training that is your skilled labor force. It is that large group of people that we're here to talk to you about. Mr. Chairman, I have with me President May and ask him for whatever opening comments he might have. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Joe May, President of the Louisiana Community and Technical College System. Uh, and one, want to thank you for consideration of what I think is one of the more important pieces of legislation to this session. While this is about facilities and we're going to be talking about funding, there's also another side of that, and that's jobs and how we address the growing job need across the state. We're seeing uh, a, a literally uh, a, a almost explosive uh, growth in some areas of the state, and what we have to do is wrap up our training programs to meet those needs. We know what's happening in southwest Louisiana. We know what's happening across the, uh, the, the Gulf area. And what this bill does is allow us to add what we call learning stations, 5,000 of those to the 9,000 that we already have, meaning that that's more hospital beds and clinical classrooms, more welding machines to meet the needs, more opportunities for people who want to not only enter health care but go into the manufacturing sector. Uh, the, the way that this bill would be handled is that this does not request any dollars for 2014. It would then be phased in over a three-year period with the sale of the bonds, the first sale occurring in 2015, about one-third. Second round would be in 2016, third round 2017. Now, there's something that we've done very different that I think is unprecedented, uh, is that this legislation also requires a local match. One of the things that we believe very strongly in, that local employers need to be stepping up to the table uh, and investing in the program so that we assure that what we're putting in place and what we're spending our, our state dollars on align with the needs of the workforce. This is a 12 percent match which will generate an additional today $34 million uh, that will go into these construction projects. Now this is not in kind, this is cash, these are real dollars to, uh, to, to add to the state. So while you're approving a $51 million bond issue, understand that you're actually uh, um, agreeing that this, we will be spending over uh, 2.8, uh, excuse me, $280 million on, uh, on projects to, to meet the need. And I'd be glad to ask for any questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. May. I think before we get started, we have an amendment uh, there, just a technical in nature okay. that, that we need to to, to fix this the is bill. the win to Franklin uh, right. amendment. Right, win okay. to Franklin there uh, on your list of, of projects. Remember, you that's have that's clearly that. a typo. Uh, Thank you. Okay, <laughs> right. uh, I would ask Peter to read that into the record, please. Uh, this is an amendment that's designated as number thirty-five fifty-seven. 
It's on page four, line 39, change Wynn to Franklin. And this is in the description of colleges. It had um, Delta Community College, uh, Winsboro Wynn Parish, and that should be Winsboro Franklin Parish. Okay. Members, uh, you have that amendment. Representative Pat Smith on the amendment. Uh, I'm questioning the amendment and its um, position in the bill on page 439. Uh, I don't have anything that says uh, that, so it must be someplace else in the bill. Okay. Uh, should be 49. Yeah. Should be 49, yes, not 39. Okay. Thank you, Representative Smith. Representative Arms, a question on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is that amendment that is for what what school now? Uh, that that's going to be for Louisiana Delta uh, Community College, and it, it should have read for their. Uh, uh, the, it's the, we're not trying to wor uh, move Winsboro to Win Parish. Uh, that's uh, uh, Winsboro is uh, in Franklin <laughs> Parish, and okay. not in Win Parish. And this. <coughs> It makes no changes. It, was okay. it doesn't change okay. at all. It's right. just yeah. simply there was an incorrect entry that had, uh, instead of Franklin Parish, some, uh, it got typed in as win. Okay, and, thank and that you. was a mistake. Okay. Any more questions on the amendment? Any objection to the adoption of the amendment? No objection. The amendment is adopted. Okay. Uh, we're back on the bill, members. And I, I guess Senator Adley, uh, from what I can see, uh, these do not apply until July 1st, 2015. That's correct, sir. Uh, and then that they would require a local match of 12% uh, prior to any uh, bonds being sold or any projects beginning. Is that correct? And, and that's one of the reasons why I say to you in 15, uh, you're probably going to start out around 7 million is probably what it will require in 2015 because some match will be in play already, some will not. So I don't expect it to be a large number, particularly in the first year or two. So I guess my question, and, and we've, at, we've dealt with this on, on the previous, uh, how many projects have property ready to go and have uh, designs and plans uh, ready to go? I mean, that was an issue last time. We didn't have all of them, so we you didn't need everything up front. Roughly uh, a third, a third. Uh, and and uh, the the ones that already have land obviously have a have a leg up. If facilities are already there, we're talking about the remodeling. That's a leg up on the process, and also if they have the money in hand, that that's a uh, that's also a leg up. So all all of those really need to be uh, uh, considered. Those that are going to require brand new sites that haven't been selected, virtually are guaranteed to be pushed into some of the later phases uh, of the uh, of, of the projects. Okay. Let's take some questions. Representative Billiard for a question. So, and how long will we, before we start to see the, the actual turnover? Uh, in, in, ter in terms of the, uh, the facilities uh, 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 coming online, we, uh, uh, from, from, uh, we will spend 2014 preparing that process, getting everything ready so that when the bo uh, bonds are sold, we will be prepared to break ground immediately in 2015. Normally, uh, from start to finish, that's about a 13 to 14 month process from that point. So uh, we should be seeing facilities open online as early as 2016. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Representative Arms, question on the bill. Just one more question, Dr. Mays. On the on my campus up in Burnham Parish, is that including? Burnham Parish, I had to look at that. That's the... Um, Lamar Salter. <coughs> La Lamar Salter. Used to call Lamar Salter is not in this round of, uh, of, of funding. That is one that we'll be looking at at, at a later date. Mm -hmm. on, on, no, it was not. It was not. On the maintenance part... Um, we we are aware of the roof issues that are up there, and we're, we've we're, got all kind of issues up there. I mean, it's um, I don't see how I can sit here and vote for a building brand new buildings when we got buildings that's about to collapse, and we got elevators up there that's not working. All kind of safety issues in the welding shop, the automotive shop. Uh, it, it's a mess, and and we got four Pope there. We're not but uh, 65 miles from Lake Charles. We where they need welders right now, and it's, I mean, I'm getting all kind of complaints up there, and I've been down there myself and personally inspected it. It's, 
I, I have as well, and and understand exactly what we are dealing with some of the worst uh, sites in the bill, as well as addressing the job growth. Our concern is continuing to produce enough welders, as you know, there and other other places. We have uh, welding labs that are outdoors. Uh, the the amount of rainfall in a year in Louisiana is from a low of 99 days a year to up to 115 days a year with with rain. It's very difficult today with the types of demands that we have when you've got lean tos outside trying to uh, address the the welding needs. I know that's a challenge, uh, and uh, the region we are working through this. I frankly, why I believe that this is the right approach, because otherwise, we, uh, if, if you go back and look at addressing the rural needs, there are 13 rural projects in this. You have to go back to 1981 to find where rural needs were addressed through the, uh, through the capital outlay process officially. There have been three other projects that have occurred, uh, one in Bastrop, uh, one, in, uh, one, one, one in the Homa area, uh, to deal with some emergency issues, but we are trying to address those infrastructure needs, and I realize that there are, uh, that there are still, even with this, leaving very important campuses and areas without the types of facilities we need. And we, it's my, my commitment to continue to work toward that and address every single one of them. Okay. I'd like to, if you would, just let me know prior to when you think we may need to get some money for that project because we need to push out. I, I understand. Oh, I, I want to give you my own commitment to try to work with you and Dr. May. I mean, we, I have relied totally upon them going around the state and analyzing uh, the, the, the worst of places that we have. Okay. But clearly, uh, it, all of us in this room want to be helping each other to create this as best we can. Okay. We were very careful, though, in the selection as I worked with Dr. May to make sure that we didn't end up with something where we were just loading up a bill with projects that were questionable. And I'm not saying that yours is. I'm saying it's worth we ought to spend some time trying to look at it. That's the best I can give to you. I'll take your word and, I, and I've been there, and, 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 and I understand the need. And okay. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Representative Pat Smith. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Adley and maybe uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. May can answer this. I got a call from Representative Roy Morrell. He's in another committee. But his question was relative to uh, Cecila and uh, LSU Eunice. And while they fall under other systems, they are um, considered, I, I guess, to your colleges and wondered if you were, uh, had considered them in this bill or is it only relative to the uh, LTCS system? And, and the answer is that the LCTCS Board of Supervisors uh, uh, promoted this as a, a way to address system issues we did not uh, have conversations or, or, or engage in or even look at uh, any any other system uh, um, needs that might might be out there knowing that there are some uh, and, I, and I guess maybe in the future would you be willing to have conversations with those systems to see how you can partner together to do anything to help we, them we, we we do partner and we uh, through our Perkins program we share funds and we support career and technical education today uh, with uh, with both of those institutions as a matter of fact as well as we've used rapid response dollars with them on the capital side we have not in the past but certainly I think that's uh, uh, appreciate your question All right. uh, and, and um, thank you Representative Morales, thank please. you mr. chairman thank you representative Smith Members, uh, the, the board is clear. Oh, I, I voted for it. The, uh, Representative Bertha Lott. I voted for it. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the appropriate time, I'd like to move favorable. Thank you very much. I know there's no opposition, right? Okay. We'll hold that motion for a while. Representative Schroeder. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I apologize for being late. I, I had two bills in health and welfare, so if I'm, I'm, I'm a little redundant, I, I apologize. Um, Senator Adley, you've been, you've been around here a long time, and I'm, I'm very curious. That other than what I've read in the newspaper, I'd like to hear, um, you know, when, when we're looking at the deficit issues that we're dealing with over the next five, projected deficits, per, per se, over the next five years, how how do we uh, pay for something like this? I mean, you, certainly you've had to give that some thought, and I'd like to hear from you what's, you, what's your thoughts and plans. As, as we know, there's not a big appetite, especially on the 
Senate side to cut anything, so how does this get paid for? I'm going to share with you a story is the best way I know how to answer it, if it's possible. Uh, the chairman will allow it. I remember when I chaired this committee that you sit on. I think the year was 1988. The entire state general fund was $4 billion. We were in the red $2 billion. <coughs> they were cutting off utilities at this state capital for non-payment of bills. We were delaying checks to state employees by a week to two weeks at a time. I'll tell you that story first to let you know that I, I have been through what I believe is the worst of the worst. I think what we're going through now is difficult, but I don't think it's the worst. I want to tell you what happened when I felt like we were going through the worst and where we made our mistake. When we went through that, rather than looking at the restructuring of government and, and how you properly spend your money and get control of everything that we do. We fell victim to allowing the Senate uh, to pro propose a temporary sales tax to bring us out of our mess. Uh, we adopted that sales tax and we got out of the hole along with some borrowing that we did to pay off some debt and we grew back to where we are today. I'm saying to you that we made a mistake. And the mistake we made is, is that when we had an opportunity to make a difference, we blinked. I'm telling you, you cannot cut, and you cannot tax. you way out of one of these messes. You must grow out of it. And the way you grow out of it is, is to grow your economy and your labor force. When the state grows, we get out of this mess. There was a lady, I'll never forget, she came to the House floor. She was from, I think it was CBS TV. Back in those days, it was, it was pretty bad. And we didn't have Internet back then. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember we had phones at our desk back then. All you had was three TV stations nationwide. And he came and said, look, uh, Representative Adley, uh, you and 60 Raven, who was chairman of the Senate Finance, we'd like to ask the two of y'all one question live on the 6 o'clock news for television in the United States. That's a pretty big deal back in those days. I'll never forget, I went down there, and they wired us all up, and they wired 60 up next to me, a good friend of mine who was finance chairman of the Senate. Here was a the question they asked. Uh, Representative, we want to know what you tell the business men and women of America to get them to come to Louisiana when they know you've got the worst roads in the country, you've got the worst educational system in America, you've got more people on welfare than anybody else, and you're cutting their money. What do you tell them to get them to come here? Well, out of the corner of my eye, I watched 60 Raven rip off his microphone and run out of the room and left me sitting there by myself. But my answer was this, and it's the answer I'm going to give you today. You want to make money? Buy cheap, sell high. Louisiana is the best buy in America, and it's a good buy today. It's only a good buy, though, if we have the labor force needed for us to grow. Uh, and I can't agree with you more, and I, I support the concept. I just want to know, look, I'm in the business world, and I know what it means to invest a dollar to make $2. Uh, I understand that. Um, I, I guess my question is, um, we can't do that tomorrow. We could do it. We can gradually do it. All I'm asking you is, if do you spend, have some ideas yeah. to, to, because I would tell you, I agree with you. We're going to grow our way out of this problem, but we haven't seen it yet, and we're not seeing it. We've been in this for five years. The, 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 uh, the general fund monies not growing, but maybe a little more than a point, um, where I was told yesterday a good average is three to four. Well, we're below that. So mm -hmm. all I'm asking is, how do we pay, pay for I, it next I think, year? I, th I, think that, that I think some of the steps that you took as a house were pretty good moves when you sent us the budget, to be frank with you. Uh, we spend, I just spent this last year, like a number of you sitting on this revenue commission looking at the dollars that we get from the state and trying to figure out why we're not growing. We've laid out $7 billion in credits and tax exemptions to people throughout the state for us to grow. If all of that was, in fact, returning money to us, we wouldn't have an $8 billion state general fund. We'd have a $16 billion or $15 billion state general fund. One of the steps that needs to be taken, I, I believe, is that as we look at the credits and the things that we've granted, we need to ensure that we're getting the proper return on the money. 
Now, the reason I say that is, is that it's really nice over here on one hand and say, look, I'm, I'm going to give you a credit. You go out and create some jobs and you do some things, but that money is coming from another taxpayer. So you have to look back and see what that taxpayer is getting. I personally think you need to look very carefully at some of the credits and some of the exemptions. You always have to look at the spending that we do in the state and look for those places where we might have gotten out of line, where we might be spending. But I'm telling you, and I'm going to say it again, do not step over dollars to pick up pennies. We can get so tied up sitting here debating and trying to figure out how to get these pennies that we're going to leave the dollars on the table that are required for this state to grow. Senator Adley, well, I, let me just, let me I, I agree with you 100%. What I'm saying is, is that these are state facilities. This is not some private sector. We're going out and giving somebody money. This is the state itself trying to train the, the people we have. I, I don't disagree with that. It's, it, to me, it's really about the dollars. Let me ask you this question. Yes, sir. The, um, the list of projects. I mean, this, this is similar, um, in my opinion, to what the Times Bill did years ago. Put a, put a bunch of projects together, and, and they passed legislation. You know, how, how many years ago was that passed? I think we did the time program in 89, maybe, eight, so, somewhere between 88 and 90. It's been a while. I'm the fortunate legislator to have the, the last project not funded in my district. Um, how, how, is, how, does, how does that work? Because in reading it, um, you know, you pass this bill, and that's, that's it. Um, so well, the, if, the I think the difference is this, is that the time program was tied directly to a, a, a tax at the pump. And it was not indexed at the time to allow for any growth or increased cost that might be incurred. And so as they began their building process and the cost grew and the revenue was the same because it was not indexed against it, I mean, at the end of the day, they started running out. I think it's dramatically different from building roads, uh, bridges, uh, interstates, as to building schools that we can be fairly definitive about cost. And, and, and control calls dramatically much more. I think that is the big difference. The, the list of projects, is, are any of those projects on the current out, capital outlay list? Not to my knowledge. I'd have, Dr. May would have to answer that. So, Dr. May? Yeah, we, we as, as in the past, we've avoided duplication of that and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and worked with it. Uh, I think there's one that's, uh, that, that may be on there. We'll have to deal with that, uh, that, that particular issue. Uh, some of these were, were not referred through the process as it went up, so I know those aren't on the list because they would have never been looked at or considered. So uh, I, I do have that data out of the out of the. You have 189 million dollars right now in the in the deferred maintenance under deferred that's, that's maintenance. That's correct. But is is that actually capital outlay? Or, or no. No, th those are. Uh, and if you look through that, what you're what you're really looking at, um, uh, the majority of them at the top of each list under each college are are roofs uh, that are that are uh, at uh, at issue. Uh, we have a number of ADA uh, uh, American Disability Act some some compliance issues. Uh, Representative Arm mentioned elevators and other things that uh, that are that are challenges. So that. That uh, that list is not duplicated uh, in in terms of what we're what we're doing now. Well, of course, well, I guess then that's correct. My research says that there's not a single project in this bill that is on a um, has been listed as a priority for any of the campuses. I'm sorry. Outside of this bill on capital outlay, so none none of these projects are in a capital outlay. There, we right we submitted many of them in that list uh, as recommendations and high priorities from the uh, Louisiana Community and Technical College system. Some of them that haven't been recognized as coming forward were, in fact, sent forward. However, we have since changed the name and scope because mainly from the time they first got on the list until today, entire industry has changed in some of these areas. You no, hit I, on a very interesting point. Let me ask you, sir, if I can, what list are you referring to? Whose uh, list are you referring to? Uh, the staff, our staff. I just asked uh, to give me some information is that a on list that, that normally the, 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 the suggestions we get come from Board of Regents come to us. Is that, is that from no, the it's Board of Regents? It's not a list. It's, just a, it's a comment well, that, that, that there's not a single project in Senate Bill 204 that's, that's uh, a priority um, for these campuses on a capital outlay request. 
Let me, uh, I, I think it's two different lists. One, one uh, and I know very well the less you're looking at, which is $189 million of, uh, of, of uh, maintenance needs that, that we've identified. We frankly have intentionally, because we've been able to correct a number of those uh, of our issues around the state, back with uh, what is now Act 391, which was the uh, similar bill that passed in 2007 to address those needs. We've been up front that we're not trying to uh, to, to duplicate or or, or, or to uh, double fund any project. So we we intentionally would not include uh, things on the list that had already been taken care of. Or well, I, I realize that, but you're creating your own capital outlay program. So I guess my question is, are you going to are you going to remove your other requests from capital outlay as if this is all funded outside of capital outlay? Well, this is all in, in, in addition to capital outlay. Well, the, the, uh, the, the maintenance needs, that's, uh, that's here. But, but quite honestly, when you go back and look at the funding through capital outlay since uh, 1999, you don't see projects funded from the LCTCS that have uh, been in there. There, there are three projects. Uh, they, they don't, you made the point. Yeah. They don't get recommended. Right. They don't get recommended because they've been following the general procedure that the legislature has been courteous enough to follow. And that Those is guys to, say to, them, long time. To, to say to them and to the universities, go to the Board of Regents, make your recommendations, and let them bring them here. That's what we have done. Now, let me just share this with you. We're talking about money. This is a capacity study from the Board of Regents. It shows two places in this state need more room, LSU and the Louisiana Technical College System, that everything else is overbuilt. And you won't find on your list a recommendation from them to build these schools that need the capacity. That's why you don't have it on your list. You're talking about when you say them, the Board of Regents? Yeah, generally, what we do is we look to them and say, make your recommendation to us, and then we decide whether or not it is a good recommendation. If you've seen no recommendation, it generally means you've not seen one from them. And I'm not that, that doesn't mean that the technical college didn't present it to them and right, say right. this is a priority. That's not what that means. So, 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 Senator, can you can you tell me, a matter of fact, if 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 there's a host of projects right now currently in the capital outlay pipeline for the community college and uh, community college system? The projects, no, no, not in, not. I cannot say that there's a a group of them in the capital outlay bill. In 07, I passed the first bill, very similar to this bill that started this process of rebuilding that helped us now double in size in our capacity. That's in play, but it's not inside the capital. Well, let me take that back. Treasurer Kennedy ultimately moved it inside the capital outlay bill, but it was passed outside the bill. It was moved inside, and I assume they're still finishing some of the projects. But are there duplications of these projects in that bill? No, I wouldn't I, stand for that. No, no I don't you. think. No, no, there's not duplication. I'm talking about projects on top of this. So, so we, we're we're going to create basically a um, capital outlay program for the Votech system, and and also take advantage of the capital outlay system as it is on other projects outside of this. Yeah, list. I don't. I don't know what those. I don't know what their yeah, requests are. I, I can't know. answer that. I, I can't either, and I, I, you know, the the all I can do is comment on the history. When when the uh, when the Louisiana Community and Technical College System was created in 1999, they started six brand new colleges. Since we've added two more uh, to that, uh, we uh, we had colleges operating, trying to meet the workforce needs without facilities. It was not until what is now Act 391 was passed that River Parish's community college actually had a uh, facilities that, that could be built, that we could build the uh, facility uh, at, uh, at Fletcher uh, Community College, that we could address f facilities that, frankly, were dangerous and, and, uh, and, and, and falling down across the state. I uh, say that in that at that time, that's exactly the same model that was used by Governor Mike Foster and, and others when they set up the system. Uh, realizing that the capital outlay process was not designed to create something brand new on the scale that we were talking about to meet the workforce needs. This actually is not 
new. This will be the sixth time, in fact, that uh, this has been done in some form with community and technical colleges, including the building of the Baton Rouge Community College campus, Bossier Parish Community College campus, South Louisiana Community College campus, Louisiana Delta uh, Community College campus. We extended that uh, then with, uh, with with Act 391, which uh, then built the, uh, the River Parishes campus, built the others, and addressed some of the needs. This will be, in fact, the sixth separate time that this has been done to, uh, to address those. So, in fact, a, a system was created to meet the needs of this growing system, but it didn't occur in 2013. It actually occurred in 1999. Yeah, well, I, I do want to answer directly, if I can, Mr. Schroeder, to your question about creating the separate capital outlay bill. I don't know what their intentions are. I can tell you what mine is. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you and I, as leaders in this state, see an issue that needs to be addressed and we turn a blind eye, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. And I'm certainly not going to do it because of whatever goes on between this system and regents or the universities. That's not my goal here. Well, Senator, I, I agree, and I hope you don't imply that if I if I don't support this bill, that I'm turning. No, I would. I would. I know eye. you well enough to know I would never do that. I'm I'm very concerned how we pay our bills next year. Not two years, three years, four years, five years. I know next year, and and I agree, we're going to grow our way out of it. And you can ask Representative Fannin; he sat over there numerous times and asked uh, Secretary Moore, where are the dollars? We're not seeing them. And all, my concern is when we're back here 10 months from now and we're crafting the next budget, we're going to have to cut $20 million from somebody else. And it could be the same folks sitting at the table today that we have to cut $20 million out of your, out of your programs to fund this. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that because when it comes time to finding the money, we haven't been very good at that the last few years. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have at this time. But except it won't be next year. It will be the year after. That's when they start coming due. Okay, uh, but to address Representative Schroeder uh, issue a little bit further, th this bill would not preclude any capital outlay projects for <coughs> general maintenance and whatever the no. need may be for, for the Votech facilities across the state that's not included in this piece of legislation. It would not. Yeah. Now, I, I think what I understand about it is this needs to be done in addition to that because in talking to economic development with all the new prospects that we're expecting to come here in the next few years, 70 to 80 percent of those jobs will not require a four-year degree, but will require some formal training, more specifically in our technical and community colleges. But more specifically in the technical is what I can appreciate from visiting with 70 to 80 percent. And I, you know, I think, Senator Adley, uh, as I can appreciate uh, what you're trying to do, as you did in the previous bill, uh, is to try to be ahead uh, of, of our needs for our workforce, not behind uh, in, in, in preparing. Uh, and, and I think it, as I can appreciate it, it actually goes a step further that, that I have been concerned with in this state since I've been in the legislature and probably 30 years previous to that. It's about training folks that drop out of high school to give them some ability to improve uh, in the workforce and for their families. Our technical system is the place that that normally takes place uh, as I've been able to view it and can appreciate it through the years. This allows, if, if, and Representative Schroeder and I have asked that question over and over, why aren't we getting there? But I've also asked the question, where is our workforce coming from when I look at the population uh, of the state of Louisiana and the growth uh, that we have? It's minimal at best, certainly some growth, but our growth and our workforce has to be from those 30 percent dropouts uh, that's sitting out here on our streets uh, that's doing minor jobs that need to improve their education so that they can improve uh, their family uh, back home with, with higher uh, uh, salaries and, and, and to have some disposable income. When I look at the big picture, this is how we get there, uh, is through our technical. 
uh, and, and I know we have the Board of Regents folks here in higher ed. If we're going to provide money that higher ed wants, we got to have people here working. And, and certainly we all appreciate what higher ed and four-year degrees, and we got to have some of those too. But the place that we have not met our need in this state has been in our technical training. Now, the reason that I can appreciate that these things happen the way they happen with Senator Adler's first bill is that when we go home and we talk to the people out here working every day, they tell us, look, we need some technically trained people. We need some workers out here. We don't necessarily need four-year degree people. That's no reflection on them. We've got to have those. But if you don't have the Indians, you don't need the chiefs. And that's what's happening in this state for so long. I have been for vocational training since I came to this body. I'm going to support this bill today. I know what the finances uh, it does, but, but I can tell you, uh, members and, 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 and folks in the audience, the way that we get out of this state and to grow this state is to have a pool of workers so that when employers come, they have a choice and how people that they can choose to do it. We have, certainly we have the Workforce Commission and we go train folks whenever folks come uh, and, and they hire them. The better way, though, is to have a pool of folks out here trained uh, that they can come because they generally take folks from my business and I am a small business folk. They go pay them a little more and they take mine and it leaves me to retrain somebody. I'd like to then have an opportunity to hire somebody uh, that has some entry-level skills. In my mind, at this point, we don't do that very well in this state. This bill, in my mind, moves us up a, a level to where we need to be. I don't think it solves everything, uh, but it certainly moves us in the direction that we need to be. So, Representative Bill, you up for a question. Well, it's not more of a question. I guess it's just picking up on some of the things that you just mentioned is that, you know, if we just go back and look at the lafouche Terrebonne area, where it's busting out of the seams right now, trying to train people to go out and take care of the, the port stuff that we have down in that area. And then when we start to the, to the west, I'm understanding that in Lake Charles and those areas, it looks like the sales tax revenue is going up according to the last um, estimating council that we had here. So if those things are happening, um, we need to be able to follow that and, and do what we need to do to train these people. Um, I, I take the area where I, where I represent that with the Avondale shipyard situation where that we know that, you know, what's happening there. And then you, with this particular program, we come in and we do something what we need to do with the buildings that we have there to bring them up to modern standards, to bring in those necessary equipment operators that we need. And so we don't have to go out and compete with Mississippi who just – you know, um, came in and scoop them up and brought them over there. So, you know, those issues that we are facing now um, calls for us to move in a, and we don't want to move quick, quick, but it calls for us to really move quick to try to get some things in order so we can keep our workers and, and try to entice those people to come back. The space program, once again, is picking up, and, and that's going to start to cause some excitement in the in the eastern part of the state. So. Well, these are things that we need to address, and yes, if it may be creating another capital outlay um, object out there that we're going to need to use for a certain extent, then we're going to have to do it. Um, there's things that we're going to have to grow out of, like Representative Schroeder was saying, that you know it's going to take time to grow us out of this, but we need to grow, and we need to do it as, not, not as quick as possible. We need to do it in a cautious way, but yet in a way that we can supply the jobs, not only the jobs after, but the jobs that come in and redo these buildings and build these buildings and do the things that we're going to be doing in a very short period of time. So I think it's very uh, forward thinking, and I appreciate Senator Adderley, um doing this for us. Thank you. Okay. Thank Representative you. Arms. Question. Got one more question, Dr. Mays. I just got a text from up there at my campus. They work and they had an inch of, inch of water in, in the automotive area this morning. They had to sweep out. There's not any emergency money anywhere to that that project is uh, number one on the list that actually representative Schroeder just mentioned that uh, that we're we're looking at for for funding on that that's our, our top one, one of our top top requests okay well, being from central I, Louisiana I, I, I mean memorized it's, everything but I've looked at all the uh, the top ones and I know what our top needs are in, in, in Alexandria I mean there's two but 
Um, okay, now I'm, I'm going to be with you 100 percent on this because I believe it's real good. This this bill is, but I'm going to stay on you now that we get them fixed. And you don't want me on you either. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Mays. <laughs> Representative James for a question <laughs> on the bill. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. May, this side. Oh. <laughs> uh, with uh, Representative Arms' question, so with, if this bill passes, you guys will submit projects um, through both mechanisms? Yeah, through the normal will, capital yes, outlay process? As we've done in the past. That's, that's absolutely correct. But both sides of the apple. Okay. But but we there's, don't look, request there's, there's, double there's, funding for things. Hold I mean, on a minute. Did, yeah. that, that, wait a minute. Did, I just don't want y'all to get out here thinking you've created another capital outlay bill. What are we doing? Now, I've heard that statement made here. Let me tell you the dramatic difference. And I challenge every one of you sitting here to do what I've done. I walked in a room with you and said, yeah, I'm going outside of capital outlay. The law allows me to go outside of capital outlay. But to pass it, i got to have a two-thirds vote. That's what this bill requires. Your normal capital, aid, capital outlay does not. It's a majority vote. And the way it works is you put all the projects in there and you get everybody enticed to the projects, and then you get your two-thirds for your bond vote. Mine's two-thirds through the process. I I'm not hiding process. that. Let me, allow me. I'm not hiding that. I'm telling you straight up. But the law is designed to allow us to do that as a body when we see a need outside the normal process. It doesn't end the normal process. It's not going to end their normal request or anybody else's. But you get ready to go do something like this. this I told you this is my fourth committee. I've been off the Senate floor. Through this whole process, it takes two-thirds votes. Now, we had about four, no votes so far. I understand. But when it gets to the floor of the House, it's two-thirds. You take your capital outlay projects out there and say, I want two-thirds vote for them. There's a huge difference in the process we've chosen. And some people who would lead you to believe you started your own capital outlay process, that's not true. So the simple answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do them both. Members, uh, the board is clear. Uh, we do have some green cards here wishing to speak. Uh, we have uh, former Speaker Charlie DeWitt, if you could come to the... I'm going to pass reluctantly. I have my mayor here. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Walter Monsoor. Uh, is, is Walter here? <coughs> He'd like to speak. Uh, I'm going to get uh, John Spain. If you could come uh, to the table, please. Uh, Mayor Roy, if uh, you'd like to, to speak, if you could come uh, to the table. So. Okay, Mr. Monsoor, if you would like to begin, we'll start with you and just move across. Uh, the, the Thank you, table. Mr. Chair. I'm Walter Monsoor. I'm president of the East Baton Rouge Redevelopment Authority, and I'm here uh, representing the private match to this bill. Uh, we are the developers of a new urban village in Baton Rouge, about a 200-acre development called Smiley Heights. And on that, uh, in that development, uh, the East Baton Rouge Redevelopment Authority is transferring uh, a certain amount of acreage yet to be determined to the Baton Rouge Community College for its east campus. On that east campus, uh, one building that will be erected for sure is the Automotive Training Center. Uh, that will have uh, a significant amount of private match to it. There will be uh, pr approximately 10 um, car manufacturers who have already committed uh, through the LADA and through Mr. Matt McKay of All Star Automotive Group uh, to furnish some $10 million in automobile equipment for the Automotive Training Center as well as Snap-on Tools. Um, an international company that is also going to be dedicating a significant amount of their product for uh, the Automotive Training Center. Uh, East Baton Rouge Parish has uh, dedicated and we have purchased through their dedication the property, which is about a $2 million purchase price. Um, the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board has committed to bring its Career Academy for Workforce Development to that campus as well. 
so what we're talking about in, uh, in the vernacular that this committee has discussed previously is a true public-private partnership involving private industry, the state of Louisiana, uh, East Baton Rouge Parish, uh, school system as well as the city parish government of Baton Rouge and the East Baton Rouge Redevelopment Authority which is a political subdivision of the state. We think we represent uh, the best of what this legislature, this administration and this state needs to be doing in the future and that is to foster these kinds of relationships where there are all sorts of funds from all sorts of sources coming in to make uh, this state uh, a better place for workforce development and higher education. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm John Spain, the Executive Vice President for the Baton Rouge Area Foundation. The project that Mr. Monsoor just described to you was started almost four years ago. We believe it is a unique pilot program that can be replicated in other parts of the state. It brings together the local school system and the community college in a dual enrollment program. In East Baton Rouge Parish, like other urban areas of the state, we have a high dropout of students in high school. They are not given choices. They go onto the streets. They don't get the vocational training they need. What we envision on one site is students going to a career academy by the East Baton Rouge Parish school system and having dual enrollment with the main campus for the Baton Rouge Community College on a campus that will offer them automotive technology training, high school and college training in terms of health care needs, and a growing need for people who will lurk, uh, work in the expanded petrochemical area. We have been working on the project for four years, long before this bill was envisioned, but this bill is critical to the expansion of what will become this unique public-private partnership. The cheapest investment you will make will be in the buildings. The private sector will furnish them with the equipment necessary for us to train people to work on vehicles, both diesel, offshore, uh, heavy equipment and automobiles throughout the state and we appreciate your support of the bill. Thank you. Chairman, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jacques Roy, I'm the mayor of the city of Alexandria uh, and here on behalf of the city, uh, also my colleague Clarence Fields, the mayor of the city of Pineville is here as is a lot of folks here for Central Louisiana Day. So there's a, a good many folks from Central Louisiana here today. First I want to commend you all for uh, lasting, Mr. Billiot and others through a tough set of years on, on budgeting. Uh, I know it's been tough. I know that the House just sent over uh, a bipartisan effort. I know, like David E. said, about who gets what, when, where, and how. It was pretty, pretty tough uh, to go through, but I just want to commend you for better or for worse for, for that effort. Uh, and in talking about kind of the who gets what, when, where, and how, I want to give my staunch support for uh, SB 204. I think it provides some critical funding mechanisms and priority for construction and implementation of a comprehensive system in many areas and including uh, in Alexandria. Uh, just so all of you are aware, the National Center for Higher Education Management Systems, NCIMS, conducted a study on behalf of LCTCS and it made certain recommendations and to quote from it, uh, uh, quote, as indicated early in the report, Sin Law is the area of Louisiana least well served by community college services, end quote. It recommended that the LCTCS commit to creation of a newly cited and programmed technical community college in the Alexandria region. Without this bill, the timing would be just too long. I'd ask that this body consider that targeted evidence-based funding of our ailing American infrastructure and state infrastructure allows the private sector to do what it does best, and that's invest in meaningful employment and long-lasting jobs uh, for all of our citizens in the state and indeed in America. Uh, I would ask you to remember that infrastructure in two forms, both human infrastructure, which is what this is about, and the hard stuff like utility lines and so forth are both necessary, but top-notch, demand-sided and driven infrastructure is what we need and that's what this is about. Uh, Central Louisiana has taken a bunch of hits, ladies and gentlemen, lately. Uh, this is a very needed piece. We are identified as the number one need uh, uh, based place in the state. It is the number one need cited by our local businesses. They have come together for that and we think it creates big sustainability. Final point, Alexandria is committed and has its funding in place for this to meet its match and then some in a segregated line item ready to go. So it didn't just, we, we may get it, I'll ask the council, 
uh, we are keeping it uh, in a segregated line item so that we're where to go. Thank you so much for offering me some time to speak today. Okay. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we do have others, Mayor Clanchfield, Mayor Pineville, uh, Woody Oag, LCTCS. Uh, Rep. Santi James. Mr. Monso, I had a question for you, if you don't mind coming right. Real quick question. With the, uh, the Smiley Heights project, how much has the uh, East Baton Rouge Parish School Board um, committed to that project? The, several years ago, the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board had a capital um, uh, improvement program, and in that uh, tax proposition, they uh, identified a $17 million career academy for workforce development, mm -hmm. um, and that that is the that's the institution that will be built at Smiley Heights. So it's probably important for us not to do anything um, to hurt the financial status of EBR school system uh, later uh, on in this committee. As as Mr. Uh, you're correct. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Spain said, we've been working on this for quite a while. We've knitted together a, a heck of a group of, of institutions, private individuals, private businesses. Uh, this development, this urban village at Smiley Heights is uh, a catalytic project that I think uh, will be a shining example, not only for the state, but for the nation, I think so. of how you redevelop the urban core uh, of a city with uh, institutions of learning uh, as well as housing, commercial, and retail development. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Representative James. Representative Arms, you want personal privilege? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Chairman Fannin. Uh, Lance Harris, who's not on this committee, but he asked me to please um, welcome everyone from South, from I'm sorry, Central Louisiana, all the people in the back, Clarence Fields, uh, and I'm not going to mention anybody else's name, but thank y'all for coming today. Uh, that's just 40 miles west from where I live, so I feel like I'm part of their group over there. So thanks for coming, Mayor. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, certainly, uh, each of you is always welcome uh, to the, this committee. Mayor Fields. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman and members. Thanks for the opportunity. Representative Arm, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm going to be a little bit more specific. And Mayor Roy, my friend over in Alexandria, obviously we share coming from central Louisiana. Uh, and, and he was saying, he, he talked about uh, the that particular area taking a hit. Uh, let me also at the same time let you know that uh, over the past several years we've had difficulty to some extent in filling some of the, the jobs and, and potentially uh, uh, attracting some of what we could have attracted because obviously our work workforce was not prepared to take on some of those responsibilities, Union Tank Car being one. I can tell you in the city of Pineville, if you're familiar with all of the industry that we possess, Procter & Gamble, uh, Crest Industries, Hayes Manufacturing, a lot of companies that depend on uh, individuals that are trained to be able to do the jobs that are necessary for those particular companies. Uh, you know, let me talk about uh, specifically the city of Pineville. I'll be a little bit selfish for, for, to some extent or whatever. We in the city of Pineville, and we've somewhat succumbed to the fact that we are going to, particularly because we possess in the city of Pineville three state facilities, meaning Pinecrest, uh, State Hospital, uh, Central Louisiana State Hospital, and obviously the HPL, Huey P. Long Medical Center. And, and we understand that we will have to make some adjustments in over the next several years, beginning this year probably, because of the downsizing and also because of uh, the situation that the Huey P. Medical Center is in. And the, the, one of the issues that we will deal with eventually, uh, not by choice, is what happens to those employees who have lost or who will be losing their jobs because for the most part a lot of those individuals will have to be to some extent retrained and hopefully we can give them the opportunities to work at whether it's other facilities or whatever so the the uh, uh, central Louisiana and as well as other technical colleges around Louisiana I think the trend is changing now in that uh, we've got to be able to compete to be able to put the end of the workforce together to be able to uh, accommodate that. I can tell you we probably lost here in Louisiana, and I say Louisiana, um, a major uh, 
company uh, probably just last year that we were in competition for, from with another uh, state on the East Coast being an automotive uh, uh, manufacturing plant which was huge um, and central Louisiana was in the running for that uh, I mean literally up to the last moments uh, probably one of the issues that we had to deal with and that probably may have been a factor was that uh, was workforce that we probably could not over uh, a period of time provide that particular company with the work workforce that was necessary to move uh, that project and that company in, a, in, a, in the fast mode that needs to be in. So <clears throat> we are suffering a bit in central Louisiana, uh, but this technical college, uh, community college, is very important for us in making sure that, one, we retrain, secondly, we provide provide uh, not only what we currently and what we currently have in central Louisiana as well as the rest of the state but uh, also create some potential that we can be competitive uh, in the future and making sure that we provide that workforce so we really would appreciate your uh, your efforts in looking at um, uh, Senate Bill 204 positively thank you thank you mayor uh, we do have folks standing in the room we were going to make committee room three available for you we'll be live over there if you would uh, rather uh, move to committee room three and have a place uh, to sit uh, okay mr uh, woody Oge. mr chairman uh, members thank you for the opportunity my name is woody Oge. i'm vice chair for the louisiana okay. community and technical college system uh, mr chairman you and i have had many conversations on education over the years uh, but we want to talk about funding and, and how we view some of the uh, positive initiatives within this bill. Uh, one of them that I'd like to speak specifically for is called the Advanced Manufacturing Center of Excellence. Uh, I have just recently retired from a, uh, a shipyard called Avondale. After 43 years, the last three years of my life has been spent in trying to put together the Advanced Manufacturing Center of Excellence. Understanding the downsizing, and I'll, although we talk about young people getting into technical schools, I would like to remind the committee certainly the average age of a community college uh, participant is 27 years old. So they're young adults and young kids coming out. I participated in two graduations yesterday, both at Delgado and Nunez Community College. The most refreshing thing you've ever seen in your life, these people would not have had an education had it not been for community colleges. Suffice to say, probably only 20% of those would probably have gone on to four year and they walked across that stage ready to go to work, many of them already employed. The Advanced Manufacturing Center of Excellence started about three years ago, both at the state and with local companies around our area in, in Jefferson Parish. It's expanded now beyond that. It's in southeast Louisiana. We've embraced about five different parishes already, uh, two K-12 systems, and a number of four-year institutions to matriculate over for graduates out of this center of excellence. Also, you need to look at what's happening to manufacturing in general. And I say manufacturing, I say shipbuilding and construction, all of the same competencies in all of those industries. People are retiring like me. Where do they find the skilled labor to replenish? So we went out and we scoured 47 different companies in our area and find out what their needs are. Almost 60% came back skilled labor force as their primary need. <coughs> it's huge in our area, and I suggest not only in the state but the nation. These facilities will help do that. It was so concerning to the federal government that the United States Navy came forward and gave Delgado Community College $10 million to bounce up this Advanced Manufacturing Center of Excellence. So that money is in the bank. It ha doesn't have to be requested. We secured it last November, anticipating the need <coughs> that 47 companies told us that they direly need in southeast Louisiana. Some companies you may recognize, Lockheed Martin, Textron, Lathrum, Trinity, Bollinger. All of them are scurrying right now for the skill sets needed, even Bow Brothers and Barrier Construction. So the skill sets that we're going to be offering is going to populate a number of different uh, types of industries around southeast Louisiana, and I hesitate to say probably as far as southwest. If we don't do something for southwest Louisiana specifically, the skilled labor force is coming from Texas. They'll build that $60 billion worth of backlog in, in those facilities. 
if we don't furnish, start furnishing them today. So thank you for your consideration positively. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. Uh, we did have a question for Mr. Walter Monsoor. If he could come back to the table, please. Uh, Representative Pat Smith has a question. Thank you. Mr. Spain might want to join him so Walter doesn't take all the heat. <coughs> What's new? <laughs> yes, ma'am. You, you both were here to support wholeheartedly the Somali Heights project that's in this bill. And it is a very good project. Uh, and we all know that this is something that's truly needed. But you do know that there is a caveat, that if there is a breakaway from East Baton Rouge Parish, that money is not available very openly, one and on record. It's not available if this breakaway district comes in part. Are you aware of that? We've been informed of that by uh, Dr. Taylor. So I'm hoping that there is consideration given not only from you all but from this committee to understand that technical colleges are important but breakaways aren't as important. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Representative Smith. Okay, members, uh, that the green cards wishing to speak, uh, we have uh, all of those. We do have 21 green cards uh, in support not wishing to speak. Uh, I won't uh, read through those. We have uh, white cards uh, that would like uh, to speak. Uh, Dr. Purcell, if you would come. Uh, Mr. Raspberry, uh, Mr. Martin, Joe uh, Martin. Uh, if we could. Dr. Purcell, if you would, you may begin, please. Uh, Jim Purcell, Commissioner for Higher Education. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to express our concerns. I'll briefly outline the, the two areas of concern for Senate Bill 204. Uh, one is, of course, the constitutional prescribed process for determining facility priorities was not followed. And two, Senate Bill 204 will have an adverse impact on other systems, capital, and operating budgets. Uh, the 1974 Louisiana Constitution gives the Board of Regents several specific powers and responsibilities. The specific authority pertinent to today's discussion reads as follows, and this is, quote, the Board of Regents is constitutionally authorized to require every management board to submit its operational and capital needs. It is further authorized to make recommendations for the budget for capital construction and improvements to the governor and the legislature. The allocation of $263 million proposed in Senate Bill 204 for construction projects was never presented to the Regents by LCTCS. Regents, therefore, made no recommendations on the proposed allocation or proposed construction, and the legislature consequently has not considered the Regents' recommendations on this matter. Senate Bill 2004 deviates from the constitutional requirement for addressing constitutional needs of higher education institutions. The, the Board of Regents did provide recommendations for capital construction projects for higher education institutions to the legislature. Our priorities for this year, based on our exhaustive analysis of the state's needs, were made for three things. ADA compliance issues as required by the federal government, major renovation projects, and emergency repair items. These were obvious priorities as deferred maintenance for higher education institution currently exceeds $1.7 billion, which is twice the amount of our operating budgets that are institutions that we get from the state. Because of the current financial constraints on the operating budget, the Board of Regents made a clear decision to place higher priority on requests for emergency projects for all four systems, including major repairs, re-roofing, the ADA compliance issues, and life safety code corrections. It is interesting to note that LCTS did make requests to the Board of Regents for construction projects through the appropriate process, as did the other post-secondary systems. The list that relates to Senate Bill 2000 and 204 is very different than the priorities requested by LCTS during the process. You have a handout that identifies the projects in Senate Bill 2004 or 204 and which were, uh, and which were even shared with us in advance for the Board of Regents staff to review. Now the second area of concern is much more pragmatic. It's how Senate 
204 impacts the budgets of other institutions. Any debt service requiring state general fund appropriations as, opposed, as proposed in this bill would have the impact of lowering available funds for the remainder of higher education institutions for many years to come. Over the last five years, the general fund dollars appropriated to higher education institutions have decreased from $1.48 billion to the concurrently uh, proposed House version of $737 million. This is a, a decrease of 50% in five years. Higher education funding priorities should be on maintaining or increasing operational budgets and addressing critical maintenance issues. Addressing maintenance issues was further made difficult in December 2012 when the Facility Planning Control Office within the Division Administration actually eliminated the roofing program which had re previously provided us a mechanism at least to address our, our roof replacements. During the current fiscal year, the Board of Regents has received several requests for roof repairs and tried to submit them. All higher education systems submitted projects to the Board of Regents for evaluation, which is the process. Um, over $425 million in projects were requested by the four education systems. And all these lists include emergency projects, self-generated projects, continuing projects, and then, of course, the new projects. SBA SB 2004 would add another $280 million, million in debt payable of $20 million per year from the general fund budget for the next 20 years. Because higher education's budget is impacted by every increase in statutory dedicated mandate and every general fund shortfall, the $20 million in bond payments given to Senate Bill 2004 projects will adversely impact operating budgets for higher education for decades. The Board of Regents has been very supportive in the growth of the two-year college system since its inception and knows it's important in addressing our workforce needs. We have actually studied the workforce needs of the state and when those needs will occur. We believe to address the needs that are currently out there, we should invest our time in the stability of operating funds for all our institutions, especially the community colleges today. Um, that is more essential at this time than new construction. i am glad to take any questions. Okay, uh, I think, uh, and, and I do have a question. So if I look at, at, at your priority list over the last 12 years, Dr. Purcell, and you've not been here that time, and I know many of the Board of Regents have not been here, tell me how many uh, technical school projects made it through the top and, and was funded through your priority uh, program over the last 12 years. Well, some of them, of course, were addressed through the, the previous Adley bill. Okay, not, not, not that one. I yes. want to know the one that you all put on as a priority. Well, one of the them, even Regents. for this year, is the, uh, and I don't know them all, um, the one this year is the, uh, um, the uh, uh, automotive uh, project here in this uh, parish is on our list and isn't included in the uh, Senate Bill 204 list. Okay, but, but you can't tell me the last 12 years how, how many technical school projects got included. I can actually bring staff up to do that if you'd like me. Okay, and maybe I would ask it in a different way. Percentage-wise, in relationship to the four-year, the dollar spent on four-year institution, how much has been spent on the, on the technical versus the four-year at your at Board of Regents recommendation? I can ask staff can to come I up. I see Miss Goodson back there. Maybe she could come to the table and answer that for me. Right. She's not been there all that time either, but maybe she has those numbers. Yeah, she's uh, indicated that we can provide you the 12-year history. Okay, I, I, I would like it today. I'd like the committee to know. I mean, surely you came prepared to tell us how many technical school projects has been included uh, over the, oh, give me the last five years, uh, you know, ver versus the four-year. I didn't come prepared to discuss past expenditures I came to discuss our concerns about our future budgets. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's why we're here where we're at, though, Dr. Purcell. I mean, I go back prior to most of you being on Board of Regents, with the exception of one or two, prior to your date here. Uh, and, and the reason that the first bill got out like it did right. was because Board of Regents was not listening to the concern of the legislature. And I've been one of them, and I'll give you an example, and I've shared this, but I'll share it with the committee. We had a Votec facility in Wynn Parish, a 1939 model, a Huey P. Long Votec school. 
Senator Smith when he was here, Representative Jimmy Long when he was here that serves on, uh, on the UL board today, we managed to get it my first year or two, had been 10 years trying to get it to the top for, for some improvements. We finally got it to number three, and the Board of Regents the next year knocked it back down to number 10 because there was no priority in the Board of Regents for Votech facilities, and it was all about four-year facilities, and I'm not against four years, but it has to be a balance uh, between the two and what the need is for our workforce in this state, and the legislature at that time viewed it as the Board of Regents not being receptive uh, to that. Now, that brought that bill, and certainly commitments to follow up uh, at that time, and the need even greater today than it was then, has brought this bill. Now, I, I'm a little bit disturbed that you can't tell me how many in, in your pro, in your tenure, Dr. Purcell, how many have you moved to the top of the list for Votech uh, in in your tenure here, in relationship to the four-year institution? Right. I understand what your concern is. Uh, you know, and I can, like I said, I can bring it to you. If, um, like I said, our our discussion today was mostly All about right. future budget. Okay, uh, Mr. Raspberry, I'm W. Clinton Raspberry, Jr., Shreveport. I'm uh, the chairman of the Board of Regents. Uh, I, along with 13 others, were asked by Governor Jindal to be on the Board of Regents to function and. Uh, as with constitutional authority as being a constituted body to coordinate higher ed, the master plan, delivered to this body and to the executive branch, a prioritizations, uh, a uh, overall view uh, with uh, no political influence to the degree that can happen within daily life in Louisiana. I also realize I'm speaking over the shrill whistle of a train that's coming through the room here. I think that uh, the this process it's impossible to coordinate when it's uh, when you don't know about it. We did not know that this was going to happen. Uh, there is a deep question of constitutionality. I believe. I think we should look forward to that uh, in the future. I think that uh, when you're flying in formation, the strength is everyone staying together to accomplish the mission, which I would suggest would be the greater good for higher education in the state of Louisiana with available funding. When someone peels out of the formation, it damages the security of the formation, and it also certainly exposes that individual who's not within the structure or within the formation. I think that we have spoken about, um, we know that there's a $1.7 billion, the money issues, and I'm trying to focus Chairman Fannin on the money side of this uh, specifically. What the $20 million per year will be, plus all the operating costs that this is going to add. Uh, while no one's in opposition and no one has, sir, Chairman Fannin, ever been in opposition to anything within the growth of uh, Community Technical College, I was uh, coming on the board when, when uh, community and technical colleges were put under the Board of Regents so that there could be some planning, so that there could be order. Uh, and is the, we've had a couple of issues that were brought up by others today about the space utilization. Uh, no one's ever done that. We, the Board of Regents did that. I don't think that any of these projects, 28, have, uh, nor we don't, nor do you, I believe, know that what's available existing state-owned roofs and foundations within the areas where these uh, projects are supposedly to be. None of these projects have been vetted. There is no uh, uh, feasibility studies available. Uh, there's no nothing within this bill that says there will be. It will only be managed by that board, uh, which if that's the way we want to run our business in Louisiana, then that's, that's it. Uh, on the other hand, I think that um, you need to be very, very careful with this because do we know that the uh, 
that all of these projects, $250 million worth of construction that we, the taxpayers, will pay for, are these going to be through the public bid laws? There's been some concern from contractors that maybe that hasn't been followed in the past. That's part of our job. We're out of that with this. We cannot deliver any type of uh, verifiable information on this project. You will be running this project. Someone will. It will not be where we are. Uh, I think the it's a it's a it's a it's a decidedly wrong way to grow uh, higher ed and meet workforce development needs. The other three systems supply workforce uh, development needs. Uh, this, this this only supplies a third. You've got a system that is in single digits of completers. You've got a system that has its growing pains. Uh, we all want to help those growing pains as best we can. I think I'd, hopefully you will hear Treasurer Kennedy speak to what this does to our debt limit, to the debt limit, uh, and what that will do to all other, the other three uh, systems that uh, surely if this goes forward, this group will be seeing these types this type of activity for LSU, for the UL systems, and for Southern. Uh, the capital outlay prioritization process that we go through uh, becomes meaningless. And that becomes a meaningless uh, piece of information for you because no one's going to be able to correlate any of that information. This is a prioritized strictly for LCTCS. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, my colleague, Royal Martin, has some words to say, and then if we could invite uh, Treasurer Kennedy to address the debt limit issue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm Roy Martin, uh, President of Royal Martin Lumber Company. I am on the Board of Regents, and uh, uh, thank you for letting me uh, speak today. Um, I'm speaking as a region, and I'm obviously not going to repeat everything that Dr. Purcell and, and Chairman Raspberry said, but. I'm kind of coming from a from a standpoint, and as a manufacturer, uh, from the standpoint that aren't am I the one you're trying to help? Isn't that the goal? Um, you're trying to help manufacturing in the state of Louisiana, and I, I don't know if you saw in the Advocate we we did announce that we're having an expansion at Chopin, Louisiana. We're going to be uh, using a uh, a large piece of pulpwood, making a new product there. Uh, with a modern manufacturing process, scanning that particular log, drawing it using recycled heat, and shipping it into markets outside of Louisiana. And we hope those markets are, are, are very stable. They're very strong right now, and we think we have the resource, and we match that resource to the market with good technology. And the governor's office, of course, and the LED was just fantastic about helping us along with that project. And uh, we, we certainly thank that, and we're hopeful for that. And we're going to create 24 jobs direct jobs, and about uh, a total of 80 other jobs. But I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. I'm going, to, I'm going to create more jobs than that. I just told in my application I promised 24 jobs because I like to under-promise and over-deliver. And when I mean by over-delivering, we're going to hire probably up to 50 people for this project. And 26 of those are not going to work directly for this new manufacturing facility that's kind of a wart on the side of our plywood plant. I'm going to put them in the, in the month of September in a millwright and electrician training program immediately. I am going to hire an instructor, and we're going, we've already got a, a particular uh, criteria and a, and a um, education set that's going to train these people right now. That's how we're going to do that. We're also going to use Fast Start. Fast Start's an excellent program. I use it absolutely every day. And we have another high school program called Woodworks that we have in about eight area high schools that we train uh, high school juniors and seniors about the forest products industry. We've been doing that since 2007 and about 24 percent of my production workers at our Orient and Strand Board facility in Oakdale have come from the Woodworks program. What have I not mentioned? The technical college. We don't hire people from the technical college. A lot of manufacturers don't. I know uh, Charlotte uh, Bollinger is on the Board of Regents as well. She shared that same concern. And why is that? Is it because we have not 
and been involved with the technical program? We have been. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're involved in the Wind Parish with the loggers program up there. We've been involved with Alan Bradley training at the Natchitoches uh, uh, Technical College, and we've been in Oakdale. The problem that I have is they're not training the people I need to have because they don't have the instructors. It's the program that I need, not necessarily a new building. If you, I understand that y'all are going to vote for this and that we're going to get new buildings, but buildings don't train people. People train people. And I need instructors that will help us train the kind of people that I need to have real economic development in the state. And I think um, the Bollinger Shipyard folks would, would agree with me on that. I think it's a, it's a if, you, if you do I want, a, uh, you know, I work with Mayor Roy very closely. And we've done some good things in Alexandria, I think, under his leadership. If we put a, te a community college, in, a new building in central Louisiana, I think that's great. We will try to use it. But is that my number one concern? No. My number one concern besides federal, besides federal regulation is having a skilled workforce. And I need the programs in order to do that. So I would ask, you know, and also since we're having more tuition-based higher education versus state-based, state funding-based, it becomes a zero-sum game. And so, Mr. Schroeder, I'll, I'll answer Mr. Adley's, or Senator Adley's question to you. We're going to borrow the money to do this. That's what's going to happen. And I agree with Senator Adley that Louisiana is the best buy of anybody around. And we need more programs for, 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 uh, for the technical colleges. Um, and when you build buildings, that's going to take money away from, for instance, LSU Shreveport Hospital. They're badly. I, we need doctors, too. So what I would like to ask is, um, is that, the, that the, this, this committee figure out how to pay for this, if you're going to pass it, without affecting the other higher education, including the technical college programs, because that's what I need the most. That's what I believe the Bollinger Shipyard needs the most, and that's what I hope that y'all could do. And Al also, the buildings... This has not been vetted, in my opinion. And when you, some of this is not going to be used. Are y'all going to put your names on buildings that are not used? That's what I'd like to know. Because real estate mistakes, remember, are forever. They're forever to somebody to see. So I would hope that when you, I'm, I'm sure you're going to pass it, and it's going to become law, and we're going to start on this program. I just ask that y'all find a way to not take this away from the programs that we so desperately need. Yeah, and I'd like to just add to that. One of the one of the issues is addressing the workforce needs is if you look at the timeline for the jobs that are um, going to happen in Lake Charles or, or even uh, Ascension Parish, East Baton Rouge Parish, those are in the next two or three years. It's not time to build buildings and then start a program. It's time to invest in operating to provide the instructors right now in any space that we have so they provide the workers when we need them, not purchase space. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that testimony. Uh, Treasurer Kennedy, uh, I do need a card, too, if you can fill I think, it out. I, I will. I think Jim put one in for me. Okay. Uh, you may. And I'll try to be brief, okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, uh, I support our community colleges. Uh, let, let me interrupt you first. We, we do have about ten other cards that will all be recorded in the record. Uh, white cards not wishing to speak uh, but for information only and now we down uh, to the red cards in opposition so Treasurer Kennedy um, thank you Mr. Chairman um, let me say at the outset I support our community colleges and our vote tech schools unconditionally but I'm not really here today to talk about education that's not in my purview it's to talk about the state debt uh, I came into government in 1987 with Governor Romer. Uh, we had a $7 billion budget. We had a $1.2 billion budget deficit. We didn't just have a budget problem. We didn't have money in the bank. Uh, we were laying off employees not to downsize state government because we, we didn't have the money to pay them. More than anybody else, the person who helped us get out of that mess was Bob Adley. 
He was the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. I think he was the youngest we've ever had. And uh, I was a young lawyer, and I just, you know, as I said, the Education Committee, I watched him uh, with awe. And we got out of it. Um, um, Robert, some of you may not know this, but ran for governor in 1995. He'd, he'd, uh, he would have uh, been a good one. So when Bob Adley speaks, I listen. Uh, but I've also got a job to do, and that's dealing with the state's debt. Um, the the uh, proponents of this bill have been very upfront with you. Uh, Bob was absolutely right. He put in the two the the, the two thirds vote, um, and 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 there's a reason for that. We have a debt limit. It's in our constitution. You can exceed it with a two thirds vote. If you vote uh, to do this today, you will be exceeding it. I can't support that. I have been very critical of President Obama, and I have been very critical of the United States Congress for exceeding the debt limit of the United States. I thought it was a huge mistake when they did it, and I think it will be a huge mistake when they do it again, and, and I, I, I would be very inconsistent, if not hypocritical, if I came down here and said, well, the President shouldn't do it, but it's okay for us to do it because we need it. Um, number two, um, like, like parents of children, we love all our universities the same. I don't doubt for a second that our community colleges need help in terms of infrastructure. But if we do this, you will see bills next year for LSU, for Southern University, for our University of Louisiana schools. And we need to treat everybody the same because they have building needs and maintenance needs as well. Uh, that will put us well over. We'll end up spending potentially a billion dollars. We'll be well over the debt limit. That will cost us more money to, to uh, more taxpayer money to borrow money and a higher interest rate, and the rating agencies will potentially downgrade us. I also want you to know what's coming down the pike, and I, I, I think. Robert has, has, and I don't mean to personalize it, but I do have a lot of respect for him. The, the, the authors have, have designed this to start in 2015, which I think is a positive. Jim, you mentioned that. But I want you to know what else is coming down the pike. Uh, as you know, we're going to public-private partnerships in health care. I'm not suggesting that's a bad idea. But you do need to understand that, that our public hospitals which now are going to be operated by private providers, are no longer going to qualify for tax-exempt debt. When we borrow money, it's going to be taxable bonds, and that's going to push our debt limit even further. You also need to know that in 2015, the new hospital in New Orleans is going to open. We have made a decision, and again, I'm not saying it's a bad decision, quite the contrary, but not to join the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act, the Medicaid portion. The business plan for the hospital in New Orleans assumes that it will capture 50% of the new Medicaid patients. So if we're not part of the act, the subsidy out of the general fund for the new hospital, some of which will come out of a capital outlay, could be as much as $200 billion. So that's something else that's added to the till. The, the other two points I mentioned is that interest rates are going to rise and that's going to push us even further over the debt limit. And, and the final point I would make, um, Mr. Chairman, I think we could do this in our capital outlay bill, but we're going to have to set priorities. And I, when I look at the lines of credit that were sent over by the Division of Administration, uh, about three months ago and look at, at, at where we're spending capital outlay right now, um, I, I, I'll, I'll just mention a couple. We're spending $400,000 to renovate the headquarters of the Junior League in New Orleans. The Junior League has a budget, I've checked, it's on the internet, of $1.3 million a year. They've got a $3 million endowment. Why is that a state need? We're building $5 million worth of splash pools. We're building $2 million worth of bike paths. We're spending over, uh, 
I look at another point. We're spending uh, $150,000 to convert a gym to a community center for one of our local towns. All important things. But if we would set priorities in our capital outlay, we would not have to go outside the capital outlay process and bust the debt limit. And, and the final point I'll make, I agree with my friend uh, Mr. Martin, uh, Bridget Martin. If you're going to do this, um, and I just can't support it because I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to run down President Obama one day and then turn around and do exactly the same thing that I criticized him for. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but if you're going to do this, I would identify a revenue source to service the debt on the bonds because this is going to come out of, out of the uh, general fund. And I'm really worried what's going to happen here in two years uh, and where we're going to get the money. And that's, I'll be glad to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate you giving me the time. And, and, and again, I meant what I said about my friend Bob, uh, Robert. He's a, I understand where he's coming from. I just can't support it. Okay, and, and we appreciate those comments. I, I guess uh, that I would have a follow-up comment to that. You, know, sure. you, you, you and I, when it comes to managing the state finance, have been pretty close yes, uh, we on, have. On, on, the, on the same I, page. I've, and, I've tried to follow your and, lead. And, 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 you know, but, but I guess I would ask you today, and I understand what you've just said because I'm there with you on bond commission. Yes. But, uh, you know, as a, as a legislature, I, and, and I voted for this, uh, and, and I'm looking at tax credits uh, that, that we offer business incentives, and uh, we've just gone through that, and we can't seem to get rid of any of them. But, uh, you know, I voted for a tax credit that was less than $10 million uh, when I originally voted for it a few years ago, and that's $250 million. I know. Now, when, when I have to make a choice whether I'm going to give cash off at the top for a tax credit that, that's grown to $250 million or where I want to take – uh, you know, uh, whatever the, the, the debt here is here, 20 or 50 million annually to service a debt, then it, I have to m make the choice. I know. That it's the right priority for us to own the new buildings because they belong to the taxpayers of the citizens because we need the trained workforce. You, yes. you and I, we do differ on this issue on the financing. We don't normally do that. Yes. But, but I think we can make some priorities that funds that stream. Yes. Uh, in, in this state, if if we want to make those priorities as a legislature, that's not your choice. That is the legislature's choice. You're right. And so I'm not faulting uh, you or anybody else for that. That'll be our choice to do it. But in my mind, it's an easy choice yes, uh, to come to that conclusion of what we need uh, to move the state forward. Not that those are not functioning in, in ways that some uh, members like, but I think this has a higher order uh, to, to do that. Representative Schroeder for a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Charger, you, you, you mentioned uh, a stream, a funding stream. you have any other ideas on because look <coughs> mr fan and you 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 have the big mic so you can say what you want and and we can't butt in but i fully support and and i don't want anybody to believe that i don't um what you're trying to do it's how it's how we get there that, that's what worries me and as you said what happens two years from now um, because the same people who are sitting here today are going to be back calling my office, calling my, my business leaders not to cut. Don't cut us, don't cut us, don't cut us. Well, that's what happens. That's the reality. But what other funding, uh, have you had any thoughts since, you, since you've listened to this for a couple of weeks now? How we can pay I, for this? I, I'll give you uh, uh, two suggestions and maybe a third. Um, Number one, um, there is a bill, I think you all approved it, I believe we came in front of appropriations. There's a bill moving through the legislature right now. Um, it's going to be heard by Senate Finance and then the Senate floor, and I think we've got everybody together that is going to, uh, to establish a central collections agency from Louisiana. Twenty-two other states have done it, and we've studied their, their results in California. Uh, brought in an extra billion dollars. I mean, California, you know, if they can do it, we can do it. The, the, uh, the conservative estimate is going to be 150 to 20 million to 200 million dollars over five years, and I think it's going to be a lot more. 
Um, the, and in, that's, in, that's Representative Broadwater's bill? Yeah. Uh, in Senate, uh, Rev. and Fisk yesterday, uh, the, uh, the s committee amended it to carve out the first, I think, uh, several million dollars for State Police uh, Training <coughs> Academy. O over Roberts, over Roberts' objection. It, it seems to me, and he made some very valid points. You, you, I'm not telling you to do it, it's your call, but you may want to consider carving out some of the money on that. Um, because I think you can, it, it is money that we're going to get in, I feel very confident. Um, number two. Before you move on to, to though, that, that money, if you don't carve it out, would flow into the general fund. No, sir, they amended the bill, uh, well, it, yes, sir. Uh, they amended the bill in, in uh, Rev and Fisk to provide that the money would go back to the agencies, uh, and I don't know how it will end up in the Senate. Before they amended it, it was going to the general but, fund. So, so we find general fund money, and we already quickly um, that's, that's ponying true. off pieces of it. I'll give you a, a, a – that's true, and that's the criticism of it. But um, you asked for a revenue source, right. and there's one. Um, number two. Uh, this committee passed a, a bill unanimously to, uh, to reduce our, our contracts uh, by 10 percent. Um, I don't know how the Senate Finance uh, Committee will vote on that or in terms of the percentage, but you could perhaps talk to Senator Donahue and see if some money could be carved out on, of that to service this. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that if the legislature has the political will to do that, even if they only do 5 percent, that's about $200, $250 million a year. And it can be done. We've all talked about the contracts. Those are two thoughts, uh, uh, the, the, uh, funding sources. And again, uh, I'm not telling you what to do or not to do. I'm just, my job is the state's debt. And uh, you're going to bust the debt limit with this bill and it, it is your call but I want you to understand what you're doing I just can't support it because I think Congress and, and, the, and President Obama have made a huge mistake doing that and I don't want to see us going down the same road even if it's for a great 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 cause that's just the way I see it thank you Mr. Chairman thank you Representative Sir. Representative Champagne for a personal privilege or a question question okay Good morning, Mr. Treasurer. Good morning. Thank you for your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Um, my first question is, in the bill, and according to the Constitution that set up the State Bond Commission, you have, well, I say you, the Bond Commission has the authority to issue the bonds, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. And before these bonds would be issued, it would have, y'all would have a written approval. You would have to have a written approval to issue these bonds through the Bond Commission? Is that how? Yes, ma'am. There'd be a vote. Yes, ma'am. So you, the bond commission could actually not issue the bonds if there was a problem, like if we exceeded the cap. Is that not true? Well, actually, we, uh, we don't exceed the cap until it's funded. Yeah. Is that you, not accurate? What you're voting here to do is to do it outside the cap. But the 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 if what you're asking me is would it take a vote of the bond commission yes ma'am well, and I guess that bring, when you said that we're voting to do it outside of the cap it brings another question to mind do we do we allow universities to issue bonds or uh, to, to finance outside of uh, capital outlay which would exceed the cap uh, that's not considered the, within the, the cap? The last time we went outside the cap, and to my knowledge, we've only done it once. Um, the last time we did it outside the cap was right after the hurricanes when we borrowed money to help local government pay its debt. And before we did it, we went to the rating agencies and told them what we were going to do and why we were doing it. They had already downgraded us. Uh, right after the storms, um, and and they still considered it state debt, but they understood why we did it. When I talk about, I'll show you this chart. We keep a, I don't know if you can see it, but this is a bar graph of the per capita debt, the debt for every man, woman, and child in Louisiana, and I'll hand this out. This is when we did the debt limit right here. See how high it got? Once the taxpayers voted to limit our use of the credit card, it started going down. You can see what's happened in the last five years. Uh, 
you know, as a, I'll say it differently this time, it, unless you're an Alabama graduate, you can see the, the directions going up. Uh, and, and we're right at our debt limit, and I just issued GO bonds. Uh, we passed the bond commission. I've got enough money left in my capital out, our capital out, your capital outlay escrow account for another 10 months worth of projects. After that, unless something happens, we're out of money. Now, I'm hoping revenue is going to grow, so we'll have a little extra bond capacity, but I just issued bonds to put money in the fund because we were running out, as Jim and I have talked about it. And this was the headline in the bond buyer. Louisiana buys time with GO sale, but not much. So we're hugging the debt limit. And, and uh, what you'll be doing here, and it's your call, but you'll be saying, well, the debt limit is not going to apply to our community college construction. But if you do that for our community colleges, I promise you, we've both been around here a while. Um, I'm willing to bet that LSU is going to have a bill next time, and probably Southern, and probably the ULL schools. And I, I, I can't blame them because they worried about their maintenance too. But I guess my, I'll go back to my, and maybe I'm not stating it correctly, but don't we already allow universities? to borrow money outside of capital outlay, which could be coming up against the debt. And I guess my second question to that is, not yeah. to just the universities, but we just voted HB2 off the floor, yes, 100 to zero, yes, I believe. Yes, ma'am. That had a three, that has a $3 billion price tag on it. Yes, ma'am. But just because we voted it out of the House floor does not mean all of those projects are going to be funded. Is that correct? That's correct. And we only have about a $30 million capacity left, That's I believe, to be able to reach our That's $650 correct. I see what you're million. Saying. Dollars. Yes, but we just voted HB2 off the floor, 100 to zero. Uh, with a, that's a $3 billion bill Yes, ma if everything gets funded. But we know in this body not everything is going to be funded because we understand the capacity. Yeah, the governor's so going to decide what I guess, gets funded. So the, I guess, the governor's going to decide what gets funded. I guess funded. what I'm getting yeah. at is just because we vote this bill out of here today does not mean we bust in the cap. It means we're going outside of the capital outlay process and that the bond commission ultimately would have the authority to issue the bonds or not. Well, I, I, and, and that would be I, I a see, part of I the see reason your point. Be, I see your point. Are we going to go above the cap, which I would think the bond commission looks at that when you issue those bonds. Is well, that not correct? I see your point, but um, to me it's kind of like saying, you know, I vote to hang a guilt, uh, an innocent man, but I'm not, I not, didn't do anything wrong because I didn't slap the rear of the horse, you know. I I'm mean, not hanging anybody. Uh, I, I, just, I, I just... Or slapping the rear of a horse. I, I don't... I just don't buy that argument. I mean, I think Robert did this straight up, as he told you. He's put in here. This is a two-thirds vote. It's going to bust the debt limit. We know that. I think these these projects are going to be issued. Uh, the bonds will be issued. I'm going to do what y'all tell me to do. I'm going to issue these bonds, and I think they'll be done. And I'll go to the rating agencies, and I'm going to try to explain to them. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, you're voting to exceed the debt limit. You, you can do that. But I'm, I can't, with all the respect I can muster, support it because I led the charge criticizing President Obama for doing it, and I'm not going to come here and say it's okay for us to do it. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Representative Champagne. Members of the board, it's clear I would ask the senator to come back in, on his closing, and while he's doing that, I'm going to read some um, green cards uh, in support, uh, not wishing to speak, Renee Roberts, uh, Ashley Busada, uh, Alicia Duhon, Aaron uh, Monroe-Wesley, uh, Chris uh, Colon, uh, Judy McClary, Randy Haney, uh, Bob Brown, uh, is it Marie Centenia, um, Rick Dupree, Tommy Fuchio, uh, Deborah Randolph, uh, Eric Sunstream, uh, City of Alexandria, Eric Sunstream, Terrebonne Chamber of Commerce, uh, Neil Buckingham, uh, let's see, Jim Clinton, Christy Nichols, uh, Larry Seasong, uh, 
I think maybe we've got all of those all green cards in, in support, uh, not wishing to speak. Uh, Representative Burrell, is yours to the – okay. Uh, Senator Adley, and then you have one question. Well, on. get, before I close, okay. if I can take his question, okay. it would be helpful. Okay, sure. Representative Burrell, question. Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I got caught up in the insurance. Uh, I tell you, it was just like um, watching grass grow. It was boring. Uh, but I got my bill out. Um, but in, anyway – Senator Adler, I just wanted to make sure, because I wanted to send a message, and I just want to reiterate for the record, uh, I had been um, uh, called by uh, Southern University of Shreveport and, and Eunice to uh, consider their institutions into your bill. And I think you said in a sidebar that you all will have that discussion. Is that correct? I did say that, and they made that very clear before you got here. Dr. May uh, confirmed that. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. One other one before Representative Connick for the Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, when, you know, I understand what is being done here, and I appreciate the need for these schools and, and for the, the workforce, but looking at the big picture and, and looking at, you know, who is promised what, are we overextending ourselves with this and making promises that won't be able to deliver? No. And why do you say that? Because in the past, we have passed bills promising, like the time project, uh, the, the issue in my area. You promise the public all this stuff, but when it comes down to, to getting it done, it, it never comes into existence. Why is this <laughs> different from those? Bills. Yeah, it is different. I explained earlier when the question was asked to me about the time program, it's dramatically different to what the time program was, which was uh, tied to a gasoline tax. It wasn't indexed to projects that were going out for 20 years before they actually got started, which clearly meant there was going to come a time if you had any inflation, you were going to have problems at the end of it. This bill is nothing like that. What if the money we aren't <laughs> able to, to sell the bonds? Or there's, there's no room to do what we need to do. Well, if you can't sell the bonds, it'll be just like any other non-bond sale we have. Who goes first? Who does what, not get done? What projects will go first? Who will make that call? I, I, those projects are being made by Dr. May and their office, uh, but they, a great deal of who's going first depends upon the match that's required in this bill. Unlike our other capital outlay, unlike how we normally do business around here, we're requiring people to put up money. If you think it's that important, say in Alexandria, you think it's that important to have this place, you're going to put up 12% of the money. Uh, I would think if someone puts up that money first, clearly they're going to be first on the list, I would assume. Mm -hmm. But that's a question you'd have to ask Dr. May. Right. I had the privilege of going to a graduation at UNO uh, last week. And looking at that facility, it needs some work. And I understand that. The, the higher ed folks saying that this is going to take money from us to do our job. Um, but I'll, I'll pass on that for right now. But the issue came up about public bid laws. Does your bill uh, address that? And is this what we're the public bid? What will happen is, is if you create, there's a, the bill will be creating a 501C that will follow the bid law. That's what I've been told by Dr. May, made that very clear. That's how it would be done. So the public bid law will be followed. All of the transparency, uh, <laughs> everything that, that we currently have in law, in addition to following the bid law, you can ask him if you like. But I asked him a moment ago when someone raised that issue just to make sure that's what's being done. His answer to me was it is. All right. Oh, and we want to expand because we need to expand uh, these community colleges. Have we looked at any other state buildings that are empty that can be expanded into instead of new construction? Dr. May tells me when I ask that question, because when you look at what Regents has done, they've built a lot of buildings that are empty. Their recommendations have led to a lot of empty buildings. One of the first things they asked me when I had this bill, <coughs> would you add some projects for us on the Senate floor? I understand. That's how much they hate this. Would you add some for us? And by the way, the empty ones we built, would you use them? Now, let me share something with you all. This is important. When these young people, and in our case, a lot of middle-aged and older, 
when they get ready to go off to school, they're just like anybody else. They want an environment that we can attract them to. I don't care what Mr. Martin says. It ain't about me. It ain't about I. It's about we. And it's about that labor force. Those buildings do attract people. They do pull them in there. And we do get to train them. Well, the question is, have we looked at any of those buildings? That they have. As I've been told by Dr. May, I brought that issue up with him, the empty buildings they have. Is there a way to coordinate some efforts with them? And he tells me that they are willing to do anything and everything they can to work together to get that done. And I say that because, the, you know, I know of an empty building on the base of a bridge that can have some space for. I'm sorry. <laughs> I bet you do. A lot of people. I bet you built do. built that $600 a square foot, so. I bet you do. All right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, sir. Representative Schroeder. Senator Adley, on a, yes, on, on a side note, uh, you know, based on some of the things you've said today, and, 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 you know, I've been a little active in the higher ed front my first term here. Um, I mean, it, it, sort of, uh, it sort of says we have a, a bigger problem in the structure of higher ed when we have to have a bill to do what you're trying to do because the Board of Regents doesn't agree. Um, I agree with that. I mean, we have some structure problems within higher ed, and it bothers me. It really bothers me that the the board that is the uh, managing management board of higher ed is in disagreement and that that we have to f we you file legislation to get around them uh, they that yeah. and, and you you know real this I'm just really making okay. a comment mr. All chairman right. Right. I mean I, I I think at some point in time after six years of being here I've spent a lot of time it's very frustrating to me and I'm not picking on any particular person because I know there's a, there's a lot of faces out there that I've seen and I've spent a lot of time talking to um, over the years. Ms. Bollinger, nice to see you here today. Um, but at some point in time, if we don't get an overall arching hand handle on higher ed with an overall uh, focus and direction, this is not the way to do it. W whether I vote for it or not, it, this is not the way to do it. Um, so I, I, my, my message is this, and, 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 and I see a couple of the former chairmen in here. We've got to do something about this problem. I, and I'm, I'm sort of had my fill of it, you know, and I'm glad we got some new, new folks around here that they can go sort of fight that battle. But at some point in time, we better realize our higher ed system is broken and that we need to fix it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Representative Schroeder. Okay, members, the, the, the board is clear. Senator Tally, you want to close? Yeah, yeah I will. I just, I'm going to hit a couple of quick points that were presented to you that I think are critical. First, I want to say to Mr. Schroeder, I, I agree with him totally. Uh, we came within one vote back when Mr. Kennedy and I were with Mr. Romer to create a single board in this state to change the management of this place. One vote. We got that close. But it didn't happen. We left with the same system we got. There are some of us that have truly tried to change the system for a long, long time. Very quickly, the Constitution, I got a copy of it. I've been to four committee meetings. Nothing, nothing in the Constitution gives them the power to control these projects. The only power granted to the Board of Regents is to approve, disprove programs, period. You have a turf battle, and I'm like you. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of having to watch it. But I really got a gut full of people standing up here and telling me we need to fly in formation when you put the same tail gunner on the plane every time. You put the same guy in the back of the bus every time. That's what's happened to these technical schools. That's why I'm sitting here. That's why I was sitting here in 07. And when we passed it in 07, they said the same thing. But it didn't make any difference. We started moving forward, start sticking right back to the back again. People start hollering, we need a skilled labor force. Nothing. Nothing. This is the one issue I really want to hit with you. You do what you like. And I'm saying this not just for your benefit. I'm going to ask every member of the press sitting in this room to write this down. We busted the debt limit years ago. We're not about to do it. We did it years ago. 
And it's Mr. Kennedy that helped me do it. This is from his office. Now, I like John. We've been together a long time. Smartest guy I ever met. But I'm telling you, join with me. This is from the treasurer's office. This is tying our 6% debt limit. Now, I hope you understand the 6% debt limit. I want to walk you through it. By law, it's set at 6%. We decide what revenue goes in that calculation. We, as a legislative body, chose to take our statutory dedications out of that to keep it as low as possible. You and I have voluntarily, as legislators, controlled our spending. We have controlled it. If you put those statutory dedications, that's our revenue, into this number, it blows it totally out of the water. We, we, have, we could borrow money till the end of time. We chose not to do that. We showed the courage to stand up here and tell people we're not going to borrow you into just borrow you totally into debt forever. The legislature did that. But now after Katrina, when we passed this law that said with a two-thirds vote you could go out that south side that listen to this, y'all. Right here, currently, not included in these numbers given to us by Mr. Kennedy. Is thirty-seven million eight hundred ninety-one thousand eight hundred dollars, one hundred eighty-one million five hundred eight dollars nine oh six, and the last one one hundred fifty-nine million nine thirty-eight one hundred. When you total those up, and you add them to the current number, guess what? We busted that limit years ago, and nobody said a word. Nobody. Not till I walk in here with this bill did it become an issue with some people. The debt limit press has been busted. This is nothing new. And if this legislative body used all of its revenue like it has the ability to do, we wouldn't even be near busting the debt limit. Now, I don't mind doing battle on these bills. I do them. I've done them here for almost 40 years. That don't bother me. I've lost so many, man. I win a few, lose a bunch. That don't bother me. But don't politic my bill. You factually come up here and you lay it out. Now, that's enough of this about busting the debt limit. That's enough. That's not what's happening here. It's already happened. It happened before I got here. I'm sitting here because we got to grow this state out of this mess. And you and I, you and I as the people who lead this state have to rise above the turf battles and the politics that take place here and lead. That's what I'm asking you to do today. You know, differently than we've done before. It worked before. And let me tell you, when I did this in 07, when I did it in 07 and came here and said, I just takes a two-thirds vote and got it all the way through the process. When I went to the bond commission, the treasurer said, oh, no, 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 you didn't put in the bill. You were doing a two-thirds vote. I said, no, I didn't put it in the bill. I just went and got two-thirds vote. That's all the law says you got to have. So it got delayed for a couple of years while they played around with it. We finally got the thing funded. This year I put the two-thirds in. You worried about other people coming around here and start doing things outside the Capitol out late? Wait till they stick a bill out there that takes two-thirds vote. Wait till somebody walks out here with some individual project looking for a two-thirds vote. It ain't going nowhere. Y'all know it, and I know it. Nobody else does that. I did it in 07. They have grown 216%. 216%. They're busting at the seams. time for us to lead. We let others lead. They hadn't fixed the problem. Mr. Schroeder's right. We let everybody else lead. They hadn't fixed it. Some of us need to fix it. And you're going to find in this body, there are times where you're going to get to listen to all the debate, and you're not going to get to help anybody. This time we can fix it.
This time, we can walk out of this room and say, we did something. That's rare in this place. Because you rise above everything around you. And look at the facts and just the facts. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you, uh, Senator Adley. Uh, Representative Burrell, you have not a question because we've finished the closing. But pretty much a statement. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to take the risk at this time to move favor on the bill as amended. A couple of comments. I think our community college system is going to be uh, very, well, will be and, and is a very important part of, of, of our future, especially in terms of work, uh, workforce education. Uh, I agree with Senator Atley. Um, uh, I don't want to necessarily paraphrase him or, or should I say misstate what he's saying, but we have been somewhat hypocritical in the way we fund many of our projects here in the state. I've been here nine years and, and it seems like we flip-flop every year based upon what the situation is, uh, political situation at the time, uh, we've given up $7 billion in money that is owed the state, in which if we could take $1 billion of it, we could probably rectify a lot of the we, stuff that we, we're doing, Mr. Representative Chairman. Representative Burrell, we, we, we read it a vote, and your motion <laughs> well, was, and Representative Berthelot had a previous motion ahead of you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I appreciate that. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I do appreciate that, but given the fact that I wasn't in earlier, you know, uh, we, I, I, we're good. Mr. Chairman, you're the boss, so we're good. Okay. Okay. Representative Berthelot had moved favorable previously uh, to Representative Burrell's motion, uh, favorable on House Bill 204 uh, with amendments, and <coughs> Representative Guyman uh, objects to that motion. I would ask the Secretary uh, to call the roll at this time. Explain the vote. Just explain the vote. Okay. Uh, the, the vote, if, the vote will be a yes vote will for 204 will be to move the bill favorably. A uh, no vote would uh, would be uh, to not move the bill. Okay. Ask the secretary to call the roll. Chairman Fannin. Yes. Yes. Representative Adams. Yes. Yes. Representative Berthelot. Yes. Yes. Representative Arms. Yes. Yes. Representative Billiot. Yes. Yes. Representative Brossett. Yes. Yes. Representative Burns. Yes. Yes. Representative Burrell. Yes. yes. Representative Champagne. Yes. Yes. Representative Cheney. Yes. Yes. Representative Connick. Yes. Yes. Representative Foyle. Representative Guyman. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Representative Hingen. Yes. Yes. Representative James. Yes. yes. Representative Leger. Yes. Yes. Representative LaRusso. Representative Montese. Yes, yes. Yes. Representative Marino. Yes. Representative Morris. No. no. Representative Pope. Yes. yes. Representative Schroeder. <laughs> no. Representative Seba. Representative Smith. Yes. yes. Representative Theory. Yes. yes. 19 yeas, 3 nays. 19 yeas and 3 nays in House Bill 204 uh, moves favorable with amendment. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, time. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being here today, taking time away from uh, your job for the interest.